Imhotep family, you're listening to the Pro Black Perspective on KWAZ Radio. I am your host, Oni Tase Kumat, founder of the African Blood Siblings and author of the Book of Power. Uh, be sure to check that out. But so far, we're reading part two of Black Africa, uh, the economic and cultural basis for a federated state by the miscegenist Cheikh Ante Job. Uh, this this one promises to be uh, the compendium of energy sources. So check out the job is going to go in on energy, and I really, I really think you're going to enjoy this. Actually, I'm not too optimistic, but <laughs> but we'll see what we could do. So we're going to go straight into it. Hydraulic energy, world reserves of hydraulic energy are estimated at 50 billion kilowatt hours per year of which almost 90% are concentrated in underdeveloped regions. Europe has 3%, the United States 4%, and USSR has 3.5%. So this is already something that's pretty interesting. World reserves of hydraulic energy, 90% is in the underdeveloped. And by underdeveloped, of course, he means, uh, well, I mean, part of it, partly he would mean Africa. Real talk, I think he's going to talk about it, but there is the... uh, Oh, here, Inga, the Inga Dam. And, like, that's something that, honestly, we as African people should be working on yesterday. Um, If if we can stabilize and, and, uh, if we can stabilize the Congo, like, 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 and then work on that, power can be provided for all of Africa. Like, free energy... From, from from just that one hydraulic uh, waterfall. But let's go. At the present rate of development, France will have exhausted its hydraulic potential in less than a decade. So we can probably look back, look that up. Um, harnessing the few remaining waterfalls in France or the U.S. would be prohibitively costly in view of their locations. Black Africa leads all the world in hydraulic energy with its reserves of thousands of billions of kilowatt hours representing about half the total world reserve. So half the total world reserve uh, is in the the, the, the the dams in Africa, and yet we're not even doing it. The Zaire River, second largest in volume of flow, 30,000 to 60,000 cubic meters per second, by itself holds more than 600 billion kilowatt hours of annual reserves, or two-thirds of the entire production of the world at the present time. Can you imagine that? The Sanaga and Ugue, half as much. Engineers have calculated that the Sanaga in Cameroon, having its source at 1,400 meters attitude, uh, altitude, sorry, and a flow tr- three times that of the Rhone at the Genesat hydroelectric plant, could deliver as much energy as all the waterfalls of the French Alps combined. Black Africa, through its hydraulic resources alone, is one of the world's leaders in energy. Hydraulic energy is not comparable to uranium ore, which, if need be, can be exported. Up to the present, hydraulic power has had to be used on the spot and with alternating current can be delivered only over relatively insignificant distances. But Soviet and Swedish technicians have recently accomplished great advances in the long haul delivery of electric power. Um, Basically, like like basically you can make batteries and you can and you can ship them elsewhere. Uh, But but. But here's the thing that I want you to understand. So we're going to talk about Inga. And this is one of the reasons why I even engage uh, Pan-African nationalism in the sense that y- y- you might not know this, but in Inga, these uh, these white folk were trying to, you know, make this dam, this hydro- hydraulic dam, and then build a, a, a pipeline, if you will, throughout Africa, all the way up into Europe and power all of Europe with that. That's, that's the deviousness. And, you know, they would have got away with it, too, if it wasn't for... You know, that meddling instability, right? (laughs) All right, let's keep going. When electrical energy is transmitted by alternating current, line reactants comparable to enormous resistance accounts for tremendous losses en route. So the huge... Oh, wait, so let me see. When electrical energy is transmitted by alternating current, line reactants, so the the reaction of the line... So this guy's a physicist, you can tell. uh, Comparable to enormous resistance accounts for tremendous losses en route so that the huge, though... Uh, The originating voltage may be 400,000 volts. It finally delivers only very slightly, very slight energy if the distance is of any magnitude. If instead of alternating, we could use direct current, line reactants would disappear. When 
Solvi and Swedish engineers have done is to maintain alternating current at the source with generators that produce several tens of thousands of volts. Transformers then raise the tension to a threshold of a million volts, reversing the current and making it ready for transmission in direct current. So he's just talking about engineering and, and why engineering is useful and why we as African people need to have our collection of engineers. Jean Rivier has shown that the Sweden... That Sweden is beyond the theoretical stage in this matter. Since February 1954, an underwater cable has been carrying energy from Sweden to the island of Gotland at 200,000 direct current volts, and it could carry as much as 600,000 volts. If a million volts were reached at an intensity of 1,000 amperes, each line of this type would transmit a million kilowatts, and its full capacity in one year would be 9 billion kilowatt hours. Once the problem of moving electrical energy in the form of direct tension has been solved, harnessing the hydroelectric da power of the Zaire Basin alone, Inga and Kisangi dams could supply all of the black continent with electricity. So the the issue of, oh man, at this part of Africa don't have no electricity. Like I was I was discussing with some individual about how, uh, you know, let's say some country, uh, they were boasting about, oh, this is how much electricity is around. And it's like, no, we don't have that much electricity. You could solve the electrical problem of Africa simply by solving uh the congo you know solving the congo like work like essentially the congo is a mineral rich uh nation so everyone in the world well every every nation that has you know like pants on is trying to get a piece of the congo uh the only question is when are you going to put on your pants that, that's the only question uh uh that's really the only question and 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 and, and you're going to put on your pants to save you know, to, to work with the Congo and save the Congo and, and make the Congo a part of, of, of African power. You know, uh, a long, long time ago when I was in university, so this was like a decade ago, uh, a brother came and he said, look, Congo is the heart of Africa. Okay. Congo is the heart of Africa. I want, I want to tell you that, that the Congo is the heart of Africa. Uh, and, and just in case somebody doesn't understand why I'm saying Congo, when he sings I hear uh, that's that's what that's that's the Congo. Uh, all right, solar energy. On an average, the sun daily sends to Earth ten. Okay, yeah, one quadrillion kilowatt hours. That is to say, a quantity of energy comparable to the sum total of all the energy resources in oil, coal, uranium, and natural gas at a present known to the exist on Earth. So uh, already, the, the sun sends that much energy to the Earth. You know, as much as all the resources on the planet. So even though you're like, hey, you know, we're so mineral rich. Yeah, uh, the sun is like, <laughs> the sun is mineral rich. You know what I'm saying? Like the sun is rich. You know what I'm saying? Uh, each, uh, each square kilometer on which the sun shines each day gets a quantity of energy equivalent to that of an ordinary atomic bomb. However, topical atomic energy may be... However, topical atomic energy may be, scientists agree that solar energy is that of the future since it will exist as long as there is sun. And that's that's for another billion years, right? Hydraulic energy having a comparable permanence is indirectly dependent on it to the extent that the sun affects our weather. A hydraulic energy having a comparable permanence, so hydraulic energy is also comparable, uh, is also permanent, quote unquote, but is indirectly dependent on solar energy to the extent that the sun affects our weather from archimedes to felix tombes men have tried to tame the sun and today we are near the point of success solar energy can be utilized in a direct form to do this one must as felix tombes did at mount lewis in the pyrenees cover a parabolic surface with small rectangular mirrors in adjustable positions depending on the surfaces involved the focus of the great parabolic mirrors thus created could reach a temperature as high as 3000 degrees Celsius or 5400 degrees Fahrenheit, the heat of the solar atmosphere itself. Felix Thomas has succeeded in using solar forces to melt uh, metallic oxides which heretofore have been completely refractory. As solar ovens, a solar oven uses solar heat directly. At Mont Lewis, a metric half ton of iron can be melted in a day. An even more gigantic project was planned in the North Sahara at Combrochard. Uh, under the direction of the same scientist. It was to deliver a thousand kilowatts of power, but was abandoned as a result of the war in Algeria. Uh, see, war kind of impacts scientists. And you see, this is another thing too. You see, this is like, obviously, I would I would imagine it's a French scientist, right? Uh, this is what, what foreigners 
can have an interest in uh, in in your country, uh, but you, but but this and this is a part of the reason why politics exists. Politics exists to 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 make sure that people are are are, are safe to do what they are you know employed to do, if you will. You know, uh, nobody nobody wants to be doing these 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 otherwise mundane experiments. <laughs> you know, uh, like with bullets flying over their heads. Okay, uh, now, now, now. Of course, you might say, "Well, look, we don't even need these people," and you don't like, like you don't. But, but, I mean, and and, and I mean, it's rough to say. Again, it's rough to say whether you do or do not. It, you first need to possess the knowledge, and then you don't need them. But if you don't possess the knowledge, then then you may need them. That's the only question. And and you might say, "Well, we could just come up with the knowledge," and and you know that's true too. Uh, the only question is whether you want to expedite it or do you want to, you, you know, it, it's it's a very it's a very complicated question because it deals with people, and 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 it's not really something that you can think of in the, in your head because people exist outside of your head, you know. So so uh, you don't know the people like from just thinking about it. So so that's that's really something that you know I want you to bear in mind because. I, I want because some people would say, "Hey, look, I want you to just read it." You know, I mean, even though the book is available, like I said, it's on Discord. Uh, but I want you to understand that you have to assume the position of a nationalist, and a nationalist thinks in terms of of people, and and thinks in terms of of how to bring greatness or wealth or resources or or stability or or, or food or anything, you know how to bring that to our people. And, and and that's really the question. Because even here, you can say, look, the French are going to do this little study in the Sahara and then retrieve Felix back to France and he can do what he he learned. He can, he can use what he learned in France. You see what I'm saying? So that would be the mutual benefit of that scientific exchange. Whereas if, if, if we're working... If, if, if Felix is, is giving the knowledge to us, we can then maintain the facilities that he builds. You understand? Because uh, he's probably not even going to spend extra money to tear it down. Uh, or if he does, you know, he does. Well, you know, that's not even relevant. Uh, you know, and that's why you would have spies. You know, you'd have spies in his network. You would have him typing on it. You would give him the computer to type his findings on. And then that computer is directly connected to another mainframe. You know, like there's so much... Uh, there's so much that can go on, and of course he will have his own notebook to escape, blah blah blah. And you check him at the airport, you know what I'm saying? Like, like you know, there's so much, uh, like, like that, like life is beautiful, life is beautiful. All right. If any, instead of trying to achieve a high temperature concentrated at one point in an oven, the dimension and shape of the mirrors were varied to spread the heat over an axis. Enough steam could be accumulated to operate a power plant. The heated axis could then be girt by tubing filled with oil which would be extended into a boiler of water to which it would transmit its calories this is the schumann method that was used at mahdi egypt in a purely experimental plant no longer operating uh see what i'm saying they, they can take down the plant it is most it's just an experiment and they just you know they don't use it for energy uh but you see this is also using water like at the at the, at the core of this was uh, the boiling of water and it looks like oil all right in the most sufficient, efficient solar connectors, the direction of the mirror is synchronized to the movement of the sun, and that's pretty brilliant too. Such installations are limited by the enormousness of their size, the state of the sky, and therefore the latitude and alteration of day and night. Nothing daunted, uh, some scientists hope for helping for plants that can run without shutting down at night are t studying the operation of chlorophyll in greenery to determine how solar energy is stored in leaves. So I think they already know this now, but, but this is something that you should be knowing. No, not, I shouldn't say they, I should say we. Uh, there is a solar plant in operation at Tashkent USSR that produces electrical power. Uh, uh, although I should say this, that some people do say we. We already know this. You, you don't know this. <laughs> you understand? You don't know this. Although, although look, I, I do want to say that there is this organization. Uh, hold on a second. There's this organization. I want to look it up. I'll probably look it up You know, during the ad. But there's this, this group of uh, scientists... Uh, in the black community, I, I I mentioned their book in the in the pro black compendium. So in the pro black compendium, I mentioned uh, one of these math books that they have, and and oh, Ankala, I think his name is Ankala, 
they have uh, solar energy engineers, okay? So it's an African, pan-African organization, like really, really good pan-African organization, and they have uh, solar energy uh, engineers. So I, I, I'm, I'm going to probably show you that uh, following, probably even following this. So I'll, I'll, I'll look it up soon. Solar energy can be utilized in an indirect form by employing solar cells made of semiconductors, silicon, germanium, etc. Uh, and before I even go into this, actually, I want to say this. Um, if there's another organization that I don't, I don't know every organization in the world. I just happened to get one of their books, Ankala, Ankala Education's one of their books, and and, I, and they, you know, they, they have, you know, whatever. They they share, they share, they talk, they they inform you about their different projects going on. Uh, if I'm not gonna know everything, uh, if you know anything, like feel free to share. It's it, 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 I welcome I welcome knowledge because I am happy to give you what I know like free. You understand? Uh, I mean, obviously not the book because <laughs> you know I gotta eat too. But uh, but you know outside of that, I'm I'm pretty dang excited. Um, but all right. Uh, solar energy can be utilized in an indirect form by employing solar cells made of semiconductors, silicon, germanium, etc. These techniques have become common and require no further elaboration here. Home electrical energy can now be supplied directly by the sun, and soon solar panels will be mass produced. Man is no longer slave to oversized machinery. Calculators are common and can slip into a breast pocket when once they were larger than chests of drawers. Due to the cost of silicon surfaces, solar energy does not appear to have be any cheaper than hydroelectric power at present, but it remains a prime future energy source. Present expectations are that future installations will not be on the equator itself because of the permanent cloud cover there, but territories on either side of the tropics might be ideal for solar installations, uh, the Sahara, Libya, all the Sudanese zone as far as Ethiopia, and a lot and a large part of the southern African region. So I actually didn't even know this. I, I really need to go to Africa. I didn't know there was permanent cloud cover in uh in the uh over the equator like like that's something that i kind of wish i knew but but that just goes to show you uh the importance of uh of of uh of uh that just goes to show you the importance of of, of travel and and being a part of stuff um, before I even go to what's his face, before I even, I'm not even gonna go to my address yet. What I want to do is I want to show you guys this. Um, so we're gonna switch the screen. That should work. Okay. Uh, this is, look, I just type in Ankala Education. Look at that. Ankala Education specializes in online African-centered mathematics, science, engineering courses, one-on-one -on -one tutorials. Right. So they have one of the best math books that you can get, particularly for like uh like just regular you know like like algebra uh look at this online education they got mukanda babo longa ya longuza uh, within the community everybody teaches and learns so you already know that's a wakango uh these are their summer intensives right here they got algebra one so on and so forth uh why do i bring this up look they have intro to math this is the book i was talking about pre-algebra it's a really good book um this is intro to African mathematics. I want to just see if I can show you quickly uh, something to deal with the uh, uh, solar energy and something like that. Um, let's see if they have. Let's see if it's an on online courses. Uh, let's see. All right, just because I'm trying to go a little quickly. Let's see the principles of life on Earth. It's African centered online courses. It, it is a little on the. Uh, well, I mean, this is like a regular college course. Look at that, 16 online courses. So it's $390. Uh, if you have it, you have it. If you don't, you don't. Uh, they got this brother study group, sister study group. That's coming soon. African language study group coming soon. So that's something to consider too. Uh, I don't see the, it might be in this book. Uh, it might be in this course right here. The, uh, let me see. I think you have to log in. Yeah, you have to log in. But basically, I want you to check out Ankala Education because they they are one of the the, the rare resources that are discussing uh, that are discussing uh, solar energy from an African uh, centered perspective. You know, STEM 
and language courses and 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 so on and so forth so and this is the founder right here so you already know professional engineer and uh all that so i hope you i hope you i hope you appreciated that we're gonna go straight back to uh to to jope uh let me just let me just disconnect that yeah uh, all right all right so and and what i would say is just go back to that whenever you like there might be a course that you want to take and and you know if you have if you have the resources just you know learn all right um atomic energy controlled fission of uranium and thorium thorium is at the basis of atomic energy a chain reaction is created giving off enormous heat 2000 metric tons of uranium 235 are the energy equivalent of all the world's reserves of petroleum uh current concerns with atomic energy make a discussion of it properly unnecessary properties unnecessary here makes his properties unnecessary here makes a discussion of his properties unnecessary here yeah we can say that it will become part of the industrial equipment of all modern nations within the next 10 years or so. Uh, so basically, we're not modern. <laughs> Until 1950, 1952, the then Belgian Congo supplied 50% of the world's production of uranium. This is why Belgium was so rich. But then, and this is why Congo remains impoverished because, the like, again, if all modern nations want the uranium that the Congo is producing, then uh, if, if Congo were rich and, and negotiating properly, Congo would be rich and all the modern nations would be left out. So instead of all of them being left out, they say, look, let's all keep this, let's all keep him down and, uh, or let's say her down, let's all keep her down and, and, and therefore, you know, like, like get these, get this, get this uranium cheap. But all right, today Africa in all likelihood comes immediately after Canada and United States with this. Wait, today, Africa in all likelihood comes immediately after Canada and the United States with its nearly 5,000 tons of uranium metal in marketable concentrations. Zaire and South Africa combined. So, so Congo and South Africa uh, are uh, are the main European uh, uranium depots. And this is after Canada and the United States. This is something I didn't even know. All right. So there's uranium in Ethiopia, Cameroon, Nigeria, and the Sahara, Zaire, Ghana, Zambia, Mozambique, Uganda, and the Union of South Africa, where a thorium mine has also been found at the Cape. A good deal of vigilance must be exercised in the exploitation of nuclear energy. The material supplying the energy, uranium and thorium, is not comparable to hydroelectric or solar power, which one would be hard put to carry away in bottles. It is a simple ore, and Africa might easily be stripped of it in record time while it was being stored elsewhere if the political future were to become uncertain while mechanized mining was allowed without limits. So they're saying, he's saying if you can, if, if another nation can, can, be, can mechanize, uh, can mine mechanically in Africa uh, without any limits, then Africa could be stripped of this resource that we keep boasting about. So breeders uh, using high-velocity sodium-cooled neutrons are the reactors of the future for the industrial exploitation of atomic energy it has been calculated that when present research is perfected, these reactors will produce more fuel, plutonium, than they consume, which uh, seems something of a miracle. Okay, that's, that's really interesting. It is in this form and other kindred ones that Black Africa will have to consider the matter of its industrial nuclear outfitting. So obviously, you know, nuclear is a tough question. Um, not too tough, obviously, but, uh, you know, again, this is the question for future generations, not so much us. Most of us probably do not uh, care for it, especially if you can have the hydroelectric and solar energy applying energy, supplying energy. But of course, you know, atomic, let's face it, atomic is uh, good for bombs, right, as is thermal nuclear. So atomic or more properly nuclear energy is a uh, first step in the creation of thermonuclear energy, a mass of uranium disintegrating within a confine containing a certain variety of hydrogen deuterium or tritium so hydrogen this is just this is just physics talk oh you can even call this chemistry but hydrogen is one uh atom one electron that's no, right one proton one electron right and then deuterium if i'm not mistaken it's two <laughs> like i guess two or maybe two electrons and and uh one proton i don't remember actually uh oh no no sorry Hydrogen is one proton, one neutron, one electron, I think. And then uh, deuterium might be two neutrons. And uh, and tritium might be three neutrons. Obviously, I could look it up. Don't care to. But 
but I think it might be that they were like like the protons remain the same and the neutrons uh, differ. Uh, I mean, I kind of do want to look it up, but I'll look it up another time. Is a millionth of a second creates heat. Okay, so uh, sorry, certain variety of hydrogen in a millionth of a second creates heat on a scale of 16 million degrees centigrade or 29 million degrees Fahrenheit, comparable to the inside of a hot star, especially the sun, 26 million uh, degrees Celsius or 36 degree million Fahrenheit. And that's another thing. We kind of want, uh, so he says centigrade instead of Celsius, but we kind of want our own, <laughs> like, everything, measurement, all that kind of stuff. But even so, I, I just, like, we probably should just drop Fahrenheit completely. Uh, the little... Sun, like if we're if we're gonna not have our own, we could just go to the metric. If we're gonna have our own, like it, regardless of whatever, we just 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 drop Fahrenheit because it's kind of stupid. This little sun, with its temperature, is indispensable to overcome, uh, Coulombian resistance, and that's another thing. We just use a bunch of Wazungu words in the science to bring about the fusion. I mean, we shouldn't, we shouldn't, we shouldn't use a bunch of Wazungu words, but that's that's what it is to bring about the fusion of two hydrogen nuclei. And produce helium with a slight loss of mass. So helium is the two protons uh, with a slight loss of mass. This lost mass takes its form of radio radiating calorific energy. In order to evaluate it, one must multiply the mass by the square of the speed of light. This is nine times uh, one quadrillion, according to Einstein's formula. The enormous heat of the fusion of hydrogen nuclei due to the reduction of mass as to the heat of the atomic fission of the uranium, explaining why the H-bomb frees so much more energy than the A-bomb. Uh, unlike atomic energy, thermonuclear energy is not yet available for industrial use. In a reactor or atomic pile, a chain reaction can be started, it can be intensified, then held to a given temperature as long as desired, and afterwards turned off by pushing in or pulling out the boron or cadmium steel bars that regulate the flow of neutrons. The neutrons being the bombardment agents that depend on their flow. As this is written, thermonuclear reactors are still large in the province of theoreticians. So he's saying that this is a theoretical power plant that you could, that we could still have, we could still work on, but we're not working on it because we're still like, let's say, if you look at, if, if social media is anything, uh, and it's not, but if you look at social media, it's like we're still in gender wars and race wars and not ethnic wars and, and, and color wars and this and so forth. You know, it, the reality being that you know, instead of infighting or whatever, or even if there is infighting, who cares? What what we need to do is we need to develop, like I said, Boko by Setna Keru, in order that uh, we have uh, prestigious scientists of our own. Like when you look at the Book of Power, you'll see that we're working. Like like one of the objectives is to have those prestigious scientists that's working on our side, not 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 so, so that so that somebody writing this book or modernizing this book doesn't keep bringing up. What, what John Crockford, John Crockford, Crockford or, or Einstein or, or whomever uh, is doing, but brings up, you know, you know, Azikiwe and, uh, and, 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 uh, and Namdi and, and so on and so forth. You know, you know, you're like, hey, it's the same person. Stop. Uh, you know, like, like they're bringing up those people because that's what we have to be developing. So uh, I'm, I'm, we're going to talk about that. The British team headed by John Crock Crockford which uh, thought it had discovered how to create controlled fusion without the use of an atomic starter has been proven wrong. Uh, the neutrons, the presence of which was supposed to have been the team's proof, turned out to have come from the outside, perhaps from the walls of the casing of a, or a fission of deut deuteron uh, nuclei as a result of the weakness of the neutron proton combinations. 2.2 MeV as against 30 MeV for helium as a result of the saturation of nuclear forces. The process used was probably the same found by a young Russian researcher. A reactor in a is a huge ring, the center axis of which is a column of combustible gas, deuteron, to be fused without coming in contact with the walls. An external coil an external coil uh, sorry an external coil creates the large magnetic field required to keep the column of gas away from the walls. Indeed, whatever the walls were made of, they could they would melt at the temperature of 4 to 16 million degrees centigrade, which the column of gas should reach through powerful electrical discharges. This method holds some hope for the control of thermonuclear energy. No one at present is able to put forward a date at which the nuclear 
the thermonuclear thermonuclear energy will be controlled on an industrial basis. There might be a sudden leap ahead that would allow quick perfecting of a fusion method, but there could just as well be a very long wait for that. The continuing interest shown by industrial powers is the classic source of energy oil tells us that we are still far from the thermonuclear substitutes, which may eventually take the place of all others. So here's, oh, so he has a, it's, it's number two is the, uh, actually, let's not even, but number two is the footnote. Uh, uh, you can look at the footnotes when you want to. Um, here's the thing I would say. So this is, this is something that you have to understand. So when I, I earlier I told you that our, you know, our people are engaged in race war and, and ethnic war and, and, and all that stuff. And the thing is, so are white people. White people, the, the same people producing these, these scientists are doing that. So the question becomes, uh, uh, so if if the, they have an underclass, if you will, that's just doing stupid stuff on social media all the time, right? And have stupid concentration on social media. And then they have this class of people who are doing, you know, science and looking for the future, looking for the future of energy and trying to solve, you know, real human problems uh, for them. Uh, and But the question is, who's financing this? Who's financing these walls that can withstand... Uh, 16 million degrees centigrade. <laughs> like, who, who's financing this? Who's building this? Who's doing that? And and you realize that the, you know, he says the industrial power, the industrial powers, the industrialists, the nations themselves are financing these experiments. And this is something that you have to understand that if you're trying to advance Africa, even as an energy, even in the energy fields, you have to understand that nationalism comes first. Okay, having a nation that can actually finance these, because you can't just say, well, we just need some engineers. You, you, even if you have an engineer, you're not going to freaking get a wall like this unless you have some damn good resources. Okay, unless 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 there's somebody paying you to do this, because if you if you have an engineer, what are you going to do with that engineering skill? You know, I mean, some of you might have looked at the, uh, the, the, the brother's website. And we're like, wait, thirty nine dollars for a class? I only thirty nine dollars. You know, of course, you spent how many thousands of dollars in 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 uh, in, in, in Wazungu's university? But you know, let's not even talk about that. Uh, but but or even you might might be like, hey, oh, you got a book for fifty dollars? I don't know, but good again, you bought a freaking textbook. You bought like ten textbooks for the same class uh, for for a hundred bucks each. You know, but but I don't even like again. I'm not even going to mention it, right? No, I'm joking. <laughs> of course, I mentioned it. But the point is that who's going to finance this stuff? Who's going to finance this stuff? And that's what you have to realize why. And, and, and even when you're talking about, oh, well, let's, let's, let's destroy that contract. You know, uh, you realize that, that it's, 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 it's their countries that are, are making this uh, thermonuclear effort possible. And, and this is why they protect it. This is why they protect their countries. Because they realize that no, none of these people, none of these white little fools uh, on the internet, you know, who don't have any connection to anything, are going to be financing this stuff. You know, they're like, oh man, corporations are so bad, and yet, you know, it's really these corporations that are putting the money into it. And I'm, I'm not saying that corporations are good. I'm just saying that, you know, this this costs resources. This costs, you know, it's not it's not something that you you know this costs organization, you know. There are going to be lead scientists, and there are going to be a scientist under them. And you have to question yourself: Why would people? Why would scientists work together if they're not getting paid? I'm just saying. Uh, once thermonuclear reaction has become adapted to industry, mankind will, without doubt, as a scientist foresee, have an abundant new source of energy: electro electrolysis, electrolysis. Sorry of seawater and by the way don't mind me I, I i just these are some new words you know what i mean i'm not reading science documents every day uh and you know i've, I've retired from science <laughs> like uh, yeah electrolysis of seawater would become a direct source of the indispensable and also i was an astrophysicist so we didn't even use these words <laughs> electrolysis of seawater would become a direct source of the indispensable raw material heavy hydrogen or deuteron present in seawater to the extent of 0.02 percent this tiny percentage is not to be scoffed at considering the enormous temperature reached by fusion production and processing centers would necessarily have to be near the sea in africa a territory such as zaire would be in great, especially a great position this brother loves congo and look i do too but like yo you know this is why i I mean, accepting the misogyny, this is my brother from another mother. You know what I'm saying? 
why. <laughs> this is my brother from another mother. All right. A territory such as Zaire would be especially good possession. Indeed, in view of what was said above, creation of thermonuclear energy will first require expenditure of an enormous amount of electrical energy for electrolysis. Hydraulically created electricity could prove economical for such an operation. The fact remains that at present we must go by way of atomic energy to get to thermonuclear energy, and until new discoveries have been made, and that they should be made by us, the quantity of hydrogen for fusion will depend on the amount of fissionable material the Earth disgorges. These are the great energy sources within Black Africa, which in and of themselves could make the continent one of the most highly industrialized. Although the future of, of and the thing is this, if we have good leadership, we could be the most industrialized, and it could be quick. You know, again, you know, just come to the Discord, read the books, that's what you need to be doing. Although the future of energy research is full of promise, we have listed here only the ener those energy sources that exist in quantity today. This is why we have not discussed either oil or coal. The future place of these two sources in the African co economy is undeniable. Pessimism of bygone years has given way to the greatest hopes based on tangible indices. An enlightened policy will consist of encouraging further exploration and development in the double area of coal and oil, in which black Africa is now not now self-sufficient. Although I do want to say, like, the, like I feel like coal, at least, is like a dirty, uh, dirty substance. It's too much pollution. We don't really need uh, global warming. Global warming is disproportionately impacting Africa. Uh, that's something that you should know. And I have an article on that. If, if you're interested, just, you know, contact me on the Discord or leave a comment on YouTube. Uh, one must also take note of other complementary energy sources mentioned by some authors, such as Ivan Du John Che, as due to become important in the future. So before we go into this next one, I want to, you know, indulge you on, I want to encourage you to, to, to get the book that we can build together with okay uh that book is the book of power and and the basis of it is to change the leaders or lead the changers okay uh change the leaders of africa or lead the changers of of africa and and uh and you do that with knowledge and information so we're gonna go it's actually a little bit of a a little bit of an ad a little bit of a change you know, you know, okay so i know books all right so let me tell you about a book so the goal and objective is to be selective, elective for knowledge with the black directive, checking sources, heritage, and legacies with the brilliance to defeat our nemesis, the book of power, so aptly named, esteemed and famed for informing the brain and doing the same as the ancestors before us. Saying Kofa, that's the life chorus. Wisdom is the key against dangers. And the kings and leaders will lead the changes. We are doing Africa with no strangers. Do you hear us? Okay, hold on. We can't continue to read the second fiddle. African power is the end of the fiddle. Let's build a nation the likes with them existed. The motto here too far, we persisted. Better, we resisted. Best, we built. We'll raise the roof and break through the ceiling Feeling the way the change we were given To stop just surviving, start thriving and living yeah. Africa's about to host superpowers China and US back up with time powers No one can be free without freeing themselves But freedom is shown and owned on bookshelves The book of power, a key for liberation There's no domination, where there's education Because ignorance is man's main weakness All of it's for you, the weak don't teach this Then the pages of sages, king and queen I come from the lady, that's the lady Near that, guardian Zinger and Cooks, 500 pages to pack the most books. The task is told to bring up the confidence. You will hold the tone for the confidence. Have some pride and push forward your test. Your leaders by reading one of the best. The book has science, covers violence, self reliance, and does away with silence. The time has come for the work to get done and build up a land that was second to none. We'll organize, technologize, strategize a new Africa before our eyes and blackness will be the complexion we see. Anytime we envision what it means to be free. So come join. Minds read what is written. Here be solutions, no longer hidden. Nothing works in theory, all that works, works and works. So it's time to put ourselves first. Change the leaders and lead the changes. Tell your friends, family, and neighbors. Change the leaders and lead the changes. Tell your friends, family, and neighbors. Change the leaders and lead the changes. Tell your friends, family, and neighbors. Change the leaders and lead the changes. Book power. So the book of power can be purchased on Amazon. Just click on the link below. All right, send me an old tap. To lend my eye, to shin they is fat. To lend my eye, to shin they is fat. To lend my eye, to shin they is fat. Old tap, old tap. Okay, so yeah. 
I, I, I was actually just catching up with, uh, I don't know if you guys, you guys probably didn't hear, but uh, guys and gals didn't hear, but I got a text, so I was just texting back. Um, I should have been looking up that Deuteron thing, <laughs> or the Deuteridium or whatever. Uh, I mean, it's not really that important uh, for me to know or not. Uh, it's, but, but yeah, that's what I wanted to say. All right. It has been discovered that thanks to the trade winds, the entire west coast of Africa could be equipped with huge windmills, as could the Cape region. Actually, no, this is what I want. To, oh, yeah, right. So this is what I wanted to say. So in that song just now, uh, if you were paying attention, if you didn't, you know, you know, if you, if you were paying attention, the, oh, I, I, I say all, nothing works in theory. All that works, works and works. Okay. So none of this stuff you know, this electric, this, like, for instance, none of this actually manifested, more or less. Like, with the exception of maybe some solar energy, none of this manifested. You know, after after Joe wrote this, after Joe passed away, none of this manifested because nothing works in theory. Everything works in work, so you have to do the work. There, there's nothing else to it. Like, this becomes a pointless conversation if you do not do the work. To, to, to get it done and that work is to have government and to have government I would say Boko Waset not Keter okay to have good powerful intelligent government Boko Waset not Keter and, and I say this because every other nation practices this every other modern nation practices this of course they just use you know Wazungu terms for it uh, but but nothing works in theory. So 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 you know this whole of trade winds and West, entire west coast of Africa, you, like it's not it's not it's not happening. It's not happening. And but it could happen easily. You know if if a government said hey you know what we're gonna we're gonna relegate this land to uh, windmills and these windmills will you know it could happen. But it's not. Uh, you might not hear that, but the, the boy is awake. Uh, all right. So luckily he goes into uh, other places first. All right. It has been discovered that thanks to the trade winds, the entire West Coast of Africa, West Coast of Africa could be equipped with huge windmills as could the uh, Cape region. The the Canaries and Kerguelens are already so equipped. It would be wrong to minimize the source of energy since in Denmark, for instance, wind energy supplies 15% of the national requirements. Wind motors or windmills would do wonderfully for initially irrigating the soil and supplying water to cattle in the impoverished semi-arid regions of Senegal, such as the furlough, Kayar, part of Baal, and Jambor. So the reason why, you know, if, if, for those who don't know, the reason why Jope seems so, uh, you know, like why he brings up Senegal and, and he knows so much about the <laughs> internal cities is because that's where he's from. So that's a that's a also another tidbit um yeah th this 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 could uh this could work but again you have to you have to you have to have that stable government that actually puts things together uh thermal energies of the seas oh and this is what i say i wanted to say too trade winds trade winds that's a really interesting word this is the reason why uh europeans would go to western africa and then use uh these trade winds these currents these wind currents from Western Africa to, uh, n I think, either North or South America, one of the two, I don't know. But basically, it's a streamline, the fastest way from the, the East Coast, I'm sorry, from the Eastern Hemisphere to the Western Hemisphere is from Africa. Uh, and this is why, uh, like, African people had already been trading and, uh, and, and, and communicating with uh, the, the Western Hemisphere. I think it's a really interesting question as to how much people on in Africa were informed about the destruction of uh, the people in America because technically they were trading partners up until you know Wazungu showed up so it's it's a really it's a it's a really on I feel like it's an underexplored uh, part of uh, our story but of course it might be in some books who knows I haven't seen it though uh, thermal energy of the seas Carnot's formula can be used to power a plant through the temperature differential at the sea bottom and its surface. The method employed is that of Georges Claude uh, Boucherat. It was applied at Abidjan, Abidjan between the coastal lagoon and a ditch known as the bottomless pit, 500 meters deep. The temperature differential is 22 degrees centigrade 
uh, enough to make a 7,500 kilowatt powerhouse practical, according to Du Zhongshe. So I, there's a lot of these. Actually, I saw that somebody had a, somebody had shown a, like one of these, 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 these random pits. I believe it was like in Ethiopia or something where it was just heated, it was just heated water. And, and you can, you can, you can explore this. The point is that you, there's so much you can explore and there's so much you can do as opposed to, you know, engaging and trying to push back against, you know, gender warfare and, 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 and colorism and, 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 and whatever, you know, instead of trying to push, oh, push, oh, I don't want feminism. I don't want LGBT. No, focus on practical works and science uh and 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 nationalism building up nations because all the other stuff is distraction you know i don't i i I realize i don't want to deal with you know like that victim mentality i want to i want to you know go about the victim mentality which is which is building these and 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 being and, and 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 having our people uh you know, benefit from our ingenuity, you know, having our people benefit from our ingenuity and not even, and, and not even using these Wazungu names, you know, like, like, like being the leading theorists and the leading experimentalists on our own continent. So the Jander region in Senegal is equally well suited to the installation of this type of plant. However, one drawback, which has been insufficiently anticipated is delaying the work by uh, creating a vacuum. It is possible to make water within an enclosure boil at 70 degrees Fahrenheit and give off steam that can be directed at turbines to produce electrical electricity. The gases contained in salt water are simultaneously released in a vacuum and create a bubbling that impedes the operation. Uh, okay, released in a, and creates a bubbling that impedes the operation. What is required is advanced degasification of an enormous mass of several tons of water within a closed circuit if boiling in the vacuum at low temperature is to be successfully achieved, giving off homogeneous steam to drive the turbine of the powerhouse. This may be one of the reasons for the Abidjan, Abidjan project having been discontinued. So he's talking about the engineering uh, difficulties uh, in regards to uh, this particular uh, method of uh, thermal energies of the seas. Because basically salt water it has a, has a heterogeneous uh, a steam and you want to have a homogeneous steam. Uh, now, of course, you know, the question is, well, would you, could you desalinate it? Uh, and that's another question. But of course, you know, like, again, that's another question. Uh, tidal energy. Making use of the movements of the tides, one can harness an appropriate estuary and create reservoirs, some of which, being relatively high up, might be filled by siphoning at high tide. The uh, reservoirs thus created would act exactly as do the holding lakes behind dams. At low tides, the water would flow from these reservoirs toward the turbines to keep them working. The drawback of tidal energy are twofold. Installation and equipment are so costly as to be affordable only by a great economic power. You see what I'm saying? Only a great economic power can even install these installations. Like, a lot of these things, only, only wealth can bring about. You know, wealth and stability. Uh... And, 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 and this is this is partly what nations are responsible for. You know, a lot of people, a lot of times you'll have conversation with people about what do we do with the nation? And they're already, they're already talking about, well, we're going to have revenge and we're going to blah, blah, blah. And it's like, no, like don't concentrate on revenge. Concentrate on using the resources that you gather from the people to make their lives better. Okay. Concentrate on using the resources to create uh, these, these, ti- these, these title uh, installations, okay. Concentrate on that. This this is why, again, like I said, I my impression is this that that uh, the nationalism of today is 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 not is 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 kind of weaker than the nationalism of yesterday. Because even this this example of Job is actually pretty pretty good. Uh, it's weaker than the example of today uh, uh, of yesterday, and and and. And and not just that, it's like like even the examples of yesterday were, were weren't up to par. You know? This this is a pretty good uh this is a pretty good reading, but of course this is just, you know, you know, just a just a, just, a, just a synopsis of the various energy models that white people use. You know? Uh so uh, and, and this is partly like if, if you if you look into the frustration that Job had 
probably why he he even married you know he was misogynist to, you know why is because he felt like he was talking to people who just just like just just didn't get it you know kind of like how barbara sizemore says black folk just don't get it like 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 it's a misfortune you know like the, the concentration on you know revenge or, or doing against white folk is while i while i while i i understand it i you know it has to be towards you know what if we gather our resources we can build something for ourselves okay we can build something great for ourselves and this is this is really already what's being said you know some some things are costly and we can we can we can work together to manage the cost all right the sites that prove practical after detailed studies of terrain are rare the difference between high and low tide had to be very impressive in the neighborhood of eight meters uh almost 27 feet so he keeps going from metric to whatever but in france the bay of but of course i probably would have done that too if i if i uh you know if he didn't do it so in france the bay of mont saint michel and the estuary of the rance would be suited for such high enterprises huge enterprises but actual undertaking of the projects which would result in economic rebirth of all surrounding areas is continually postponed because of the enormous costs involved the french national electric company has calculated that by creating a powerhouse it would be able to supply fully half of france's present energy needs dang 20 to 30 billion uh kilowatt hours per annum it would be of interest to survey the rise of sea tides and see this is what i'm saying this is the this is what nations do they're like hey can we undertake this project no we can't but it, it might be of benefit but we can't undertake it you know we can't and, and and the thing is this when you create when you do a project like this it creates jobs it creates jobs it creates you know jobs that go are long-standing it creates jobs that are are, are temporary you know uh but but the idea is that uh, you know, then people want to have these contracts. But again, you know, if you can't afford it, you can't afford it. Um, and and of course, if we have like a Pan African, uh, a Pan Africanism, like we have Pan Africanism, or if we have even a powerful African nation, we could, uh, they say, oh well, we'll we'll help you build this. We'll like like we could we can go to a neighboring nation and be like, we'll help you build this over here. It'll provide energy for both of us. You know, all that matters is that you you know this provides energy for us for a uh, hundred years. You know what I mean? Like, 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 like you, oh my gosh. It would be interesting. To, and then of course, you know, that's the thing too, that you have to realize that even if you have that agreement, you know, say, let's say 40 years down the line, they, they, they start to cut back. What do you do as a nation? You know, you might be like, Hey, look, you're, 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 you're breaching contract. And then you might even fight over it. Like, like this is the real world. It's not, it's not the world of, 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 of pretend that a lot of quote unquote black nationalists want to engage in and indulge in and, and waste time you know discussing this is the real world and and uh and i mean i'm sure you might say well it's not really the real world if you're still if it's still something you're making up but I'm, I'm i'm telling you what the real world looks like okay and i want you to come join reality so definitely you know what i said what i said before is like the book of power is the book of reality if you will you know it's the book of how to realistically step into uh our you know step into wear some pants step into the nationhood uh and 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 look i want you to you know read it but also you know give me give me a give me a review uh it would be of interest to survey the rise of sea tides in the estuaries of african rivers especially those of the senegal river the effect of which can be felt as far upstream as pador and the salem uh gambia and the casamans rivers the theory of tidal energy powerhouse is fairly complex and even includes the earth's rotation within its margins of error dang we will return to this question in discussing the industrialization of Mali, former Senegal Sudan Federation. All right. Global uh, heat. Uh, Carnot's principles can be applied too to the temperature differential between the Earth's surface and a hot subterranean source uh, reached by drilling. This differential could boil water and produce steam under a vacuum at well below 100 degrees centigrade. But you see how water is central to many of these things. You know, boil, the boiling of water and using that steam. To, to to move turbines and so on and so forth and and that's like a basic uh that's like a basic principle and he's, he's, just, he's just he's just telling you it's like it's like something that could be so easily done but we're not even discussing it research uh and a start toward application have already been uh carried out in zaire uh okay 
So this is voltaic thermal energy and geothermal energy. This can be employed on the spot by thermal generators that send into pipes buried in lava. Well, a great mass of water, psh, again, which as it evaporates, delivers steam, again, to be directed to operating turbines. Basic. You know, so it's just temporary temperature differentials uh, that, that can lead to the boiling of water and that boiling of water creating steam, that steam creating, uh, up powering tur moving turbines and turbines thereby, you know, creating energy. The circuit is a closed one and the uh, recondensed uh, vapor after being used is returned by a pumping system back into the lava. Wait, hold on a second. The circuit is a closed one and the recondensed vapor, so the vapor is returned uh, by a pumping system back into the lava. So the va so it's like, it like keeps, it's like a circulating system, you know, first, uh, just in case people don't understand rain, or if somebody out there doesn't understand rain, uh, you know, you have water, it boils, it steams up, steam then, uh, like, it's in the gas form, but it's now, uh, it's too, what would you call it, too cool for it to exist in this gas form, so it falls back down as water. Uh, recondensed vapor is basically just water, okay? After being used, it's returned to the pumping system back into the lava. This might be installed at the foot of Mount Cameroon in Kenya. Uh, generally speaking, all of East Africa, Ethiopia, Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, and the entire Rift Valley region would be eminently suited for the installation of power plants, power, plants powered by geothermal energy. These are the energy resources of Black Africa, their utilization by Africans themselves, not to create industries to supplement those of Europe, but to process the raw materials that the continent contains could turn black Africa into a paradise on earth. And so these are his uh, uh, footnotes. Uh, let's say these were the 1950 most recent figures reveal the following. Uh, the production of or the current uranium resources of, of black Africa is 272,800. United States is only 262. Uh, thousand and Canada is 186,000 so that's that's actually a lot so this is the resources so actually I don't even know United States has a lot of freaking uh, uranium so that's actually that'll be a problem for <laughs> most of the world and look at the production the production of America is 88,000 8, sorry 8,000 and see that's not even as much as like that would take several years well I don't know the production uh, I don't know what he's pushing the production on uh like in terms of is this per year or something but but the point being that uh well this is actually pretty dangerous because these people could just make bombs after bombs uh all right so anyway two what was uh true so this is a this is a typo see everybody has typos huh? <laughs> what was true of thermonuclear development in 1959 is still largely true today however the use of laser to incite thermonuclear reaction does allow for great hopes uh jet which uh makes use of uh to the the joint European Taurus, which makes use of the Thernot configuration developed by Soviet researchers, plan to demonstrate the possibility of controlling thermonuclear reaction on a practical level. If it proves successful, it will be a time to go on to the next stage, the construction of the first prototype thermonuclear reactors, which would probably occur in the year 2000. So he's just talking about uh, whether the thermonuclear power is really viable. And so this is number three. Since it was first written, oil deposits have been discovered in Gabon, Nigeria, Senegal, Angola, and the Congo. So they're continually discovering new oil deposits. And of course, uh, shoot, Congo's always getting the thing, but you, 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 you obviously know that you know war comes to these uh, nations. But you have to defend yourself. You have to, because people want this. People want to be producing these things so that they're ahead of their uh, opponents. Uh, it may be noted that the hydraulic energy, solar, which includes the energy latent in winds and tides. So this is footnote four. Uh, volcanic and geothermal sources are non-pollutants unlike the use of coal, oil, and atomic energy. The yeah, atomic energy has pollution. The disposal of nuclear waste has, however, become a controversial problem of magnitude. So, yeah, so that's why, you know, you don't really want to go into atomic energy, uh, only because nuclear waste, you know, is, you know, devastating. There's this thing called uh, environmental racism, where essentially the nuclear waste of certain, you know, uh, nuclear plants are put into, you know, impoverished black areas. And, you know, what results from that is what you would expect you know like like sick and dying and you know like like short lifespans for for black folk who are, are who on top of being impoverished are also being irradiated by nuclear waste uh and and one of the poems in the in the pro-black compendium which is another book i want you to read uh we talk about how you know new york you know leaves its uh, nuclear waste in the black south uh so it just exports its nuclear waste into black uh 
into the, into the into the black areas, and and this is this is just a, a reality of of the world. Uh, so that's why you know if I were to you know, and this is the leadership of Africa. Now I'm not the leadership of Africa, obviously. I'm just you know the guy reading the book. <laughs> but if uh, you know Africa really should be about uh, like I would I would advise that we 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 look into these energy resources and 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 create those turbines. And, and create that stability and and but but make sure we do it for ourselves and not for europe but uh thank you so much for listening please check out the book of power give me some likes reviews uh subscribe uh i i and also join the discord have some conversation We're, we started to do a daily well i don't know if it's going to be you know if it's going to be kept up all the time uh but a daily you know discussion regarding uh regarding uh uh the, the book of power okay so 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 definitely come through uh, lend your voice let us see what you like like i want to see what you think but also you know c come through and, and you know help me help me get this book in people's hands because what i realize is that we we can really change this world okay we can really change this world but but we have to work together all right uh, but thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this. If you do, leave a comment. Uh, and otherwise, uh, you know, you know, you could just, you know, you can also leave a comment. But this is the series. There's only two more parts left. Uh, there's part three, and then there's a conclusion. So, uh, like, like, I'll see you next time. And Shemiam Hotel.